And welcome. Today we're going to talk about the Laplace equation again, but in the context of electrostatic potentials. So the goal today is, is simply to derive uh, y Laplace equation Uh, describes uh, can describe uh, electrostatic potentials okay so um, it, we're not going to do any like explicit calculations this is really a, a, a derivation so uh, let's let's uh, go back and just recall uh, something about the heat equation just to get some frame of reference. When we wanted to find the, we have the heat equation like so. And uh, if it's equal to zero, it means that we're in equilibrium. All right, and then we're talking now about some region. We'll call it D. And we have what's called the Dirichlet problem. So we have some boundary, which we're going to call partial, uh, partial D, and that's going to be the boundary. That's just a notation for the boundary. And uh, we're going to have our boundary condition, our Dirichlet boundary condition, be that U of X comma Y, uh, we can think of it as comma Z as well if you want, if you want to think of it as a three-dimensional thing, evaluated on the boundary, We'll use a vector notation there. It's going to be equal to you know some uh, function, which is going to be this temperature defined on the boundary. So I'll say that 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 um, that on the boundary we have some function f of t that's parameterized. It starts at that point and it goes around like so. And the and the function can be defined as such. So we have some function x of t the vector x of t uh, uh, that, that's um, on the partial, on the boundary, and it's going to be equal to f of t. Okay, So that just defines that we have a temperature that's prescribed on the boundary, uh, and it's going to be equal to uh, what this parameterized function gives us. Okay, So with this problem, then, we, we define, it defines the Laplace equation. which is simply the Laplacian of our temperature distribution equal to zero plus this boundary condition here. Okay, so, um, so that's with, uh, so what we have here, what we're invoking is the fact that the time derivative is zero, and that creates that equilibrium condition. All right, so now what we want to do then is now we're going to shift gears to talk about electrostatics. So now we're going to define u of x, y, z um, to be a potential, electric potential. So this is the electric potential. Uh, and we can even throw a time variable in there, but we're going to say that it's going to be static, and then as in du dt is equal to zero. We're not going to have any change in time, but we can throw the time variable in there anyway. All right. So, um, but well, but we want to describe uh, the similar problem where we have again some region of space, which we'll call D, and then we have some boundary partial d just like before and we have a boundary condition as well that u on the boundary is equal to some function f that's a uh, prescribed voltage and just like before what we want to find out is what is u in, in the interior of our set d we want to know that's the goal, is to solve for u. Okay, so 
Uh, here, so the question is then, what is the governing? The governing PDE. for you. All right, so I can give away, uh, of course, uh, the answer is that it's going to be the Laplace equation. But, but the question then is, why? Uh, we want to know why. And that's the goal today is just to de derive from first principles, from our physical principles that we know, why the Laplace equation uh, uh, defines the, uh, the potential. So we need a few assumptions here. So first of all, I'm going to write my set again. There's my D. There's my partial of D. Okay, so a, a few things. So we're going to assume no charge density in D or the edge of D. Okay, so what we mean by this is I'm going to have our function uh, which is that is is that charge density, and that's going to be equal to zero. In general, though, uh, it could be it could be non-zero, but uh, for this particular problem, we're going to assume there is no charges. Okay, so this area is devoid of any actual electrons or protons um, or anything like that. Okay, so uh, another thing we're going to assume. And this goes along with the charge density, no current density. We have because we have no charges, we also have no current flow. And current flow is usually given by a vector field x, y, z, t. And that's a vector field showing how uh, charges are flowing through D. Alright, so we're setting that equal to zero. There's no uh, flowing charges. Um, and again, just like before, uh, nothing is changing with time. And that's what we mean by static. Okay, so uh, with those little assumptions put in place, so... Um, we just got to recall a few things. Uh, you know, that PDEs in general, right? I've talked about this before. Usually PDEs uh, are defined by one, some sort of conservation principle. and also some sort of physical law. And the physical law usually uh, defines um, how it defines how uh, things change with time. Okay, and so the conservation principle is usually uh, just uh, that uh, nothing can be created or destroyed. So these two together, uh, so what we're talking about here, when we put those together in the context of, of electrostatics, what we're talking about is the laws of electromagnetism. So uh, these laws of electromagnetism are, um, are, are, are both parts, uh, conservation principles and physical laws, assertions about how, uh, how, uh, how charges and how uh, electric fields and magnetic fields uh, work together um, to, to govern um, uh, things like voltage. Okay, so uh, the laws of electromagnetism and uh, um, or an assertion of how of how these things interact. So again, we're going to define some. We're going to define a few things. So first, we've already talked about current density and charge density. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to define an electric field. So that's our E field. 
And then we also have, um, in addition to that, we have an, a magnetic field, which we'll call B. And that's a function of space and time in general, and that's the uh, magnetic field. And then we also have um, the current density, and then just a few little constants. This is called the permittivity of free space. And there's this other constant. And you can look these up on Wikipedia or on the internet somewhere or in, a, in your physics book. And this is the permeability. Okay. Um, so, uh, so when we mean no current density, we mean all, uh, you know, there's no, there's no uh, conduction going on. So uh, th those are all of our ingredients here, and now we're going to write down what uh, laws of electromagnetism with these put together are defined by Maxwell's equations. So let's go into what Maxwell's equations are, and from that we can easily uh, derive uh, the Laplace equation. So here is Maxwell. So there's four equations. And the first equation is Gauss's law. So Gauss's law is it really is a conservation principle. It states that, you know, again, we're gonna I'm gonna put my little setup there. This is my D, and that's my uh, boundary of D. And we have some if I want to take a surface integral, I want to find the total flux of the electric field. It's going to be E dotted with the normal dS. Okay, and we know that has to equal, or Gauss's law, I guess, asserts that it has to equal 1 over the permittivity of space times the volume integral over the over our volume of the charge density dv so this says the total flux through the of the electric field through the boundary has to equal the total charge inside okay so um, total flux of electric field equals the total charge inside uh, the region that looks nice, uh, but one thing we know is from the divergence theorem that we can write this now as a triple integral of the divergence of our vector field, of our electric field, dV. Uh, and again, we assume, and we assumed from before that the charge density was zero in our region, right? So that means this is equal to zero. And essentially we're saying, because D at this point is arbitrary, so because D is arbitrary, we can write down that the electric field, the divergence of the electric field, this is div E, is equal to zero for all points in D. Okay, so we're getting close. Uh, and the other law here is, um, and this one isn't really used, but I'll write it down. This is the Gauss's law uh, for magnetism. And it states that the magnetic field is divergence free. Uh, the third law, and we've already done this one before, it's Faraday's law. And it states that the curl of our electric field is equal to the negative time derivative of our, uh, our magnetic field. 
And finally, Amper's Law. And it states that the curl of the magnetic field equals uh, two parts, the uh, permeability of free space times the current density plus the permittivity of free space times the time derivative of the electric field. Uh, so those are the laws put together, but we already knew, we're talking about the electrostatic case, right? So this is static. So all time derivatives are equal to zero, and we also said there's no current. So we know that um, is equal to the zero vector, and we know that uh, that there's divergence free in the electric in the magnetic field, but we also know that. And this is from Faraday's law here, that the curl of our electric field is equal to zero. And we will assume here that the, deri the derivatives are continuous. We'll assume that E is defined everywhere. So everything is smooth, continuous, and in, so, in that case then it will imply, and remember this is from uh, section 13.5, uh, if you want to look up the pages 943 in your calculus textbook, and it states that um, when you have a curl-free elec uh, um, electric field, or any vector field, uh, and you have um, all the derivatives are continuous and E is defined everywhere inside of D, then that the electric field is conservative. And that means it's independent of path. Um, if I move charges or in the static electric field and I want to compute the work, um, it will uh, it'll be uh, it'll only depend on the end potential. And what that means is, is that there exists a U such that the gradient of U, that voltage, is equal to the electric field. All right, so put this all together and recall that there is Gauss's law. And because we have no current or no charge density, we can put this together, put this over here, and I'll put that over there. And that is precisely Laplace's equation. Okay, so now we have a way to describe. So in, oh, with all those assumptions put together and using our, uh, our Gauss's law, our Faraday's law, Amper's law, and uh, all together we were able to establish that the Laplace equation defines an electrostatic potential U. So there exists a potential U uh, that will generate the electric field by taking the gradient. Uh, with all that together, we can now uh, state that the Laplace equation truly does define, uh, 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 it defines uh, uh, an electrostatic potential in the absence of any uh, charge density in a region. Thank you.